times as Roof is across the timeline. Eldridge with it now on the left wing. Penetrates into the paint. The pass back to Phillips. Here's his three. It's good, and the birds are on the board. Here's three and a half minutes into the contest. Lloyd Phillips scores the first basket of the game, and here's Young with it now with his team up 11-3. to three. He drifts toward the left and finds Darrell Ashford up on top. Harriman, now on the right side it goes. Carter with it, guarded by Hill. Picks it up and finds Ashford. It's Osiris on Darrell Ashford, the J.C. transfer, who already has nine points. Penetrates, shoots off the dribble, misses off the back iron, rebound Austin Hill. And now Phillips across the timeline for the Birds. Picks up his dribble and goes to Rubin. Inside, Deema against Lawson. Goes to the goal and scores the layup. And the Redbirds with the last five points in the game are now back to within six. Well, Lawson's really the only true post player they have. Let's go right at him. As Carter goes baseline and he is fouled by Austin Hill, who was beaten by Carter off the dribble, and that gets us to an official timeout. Hill's first foul, the team's second. And we pause with 15.43 left here in the opening half and the Redbirds trailing 11-5. to Back after this on the Redbird Radio Network. Cheeks Bar and Grill in Tawanda Plaza is the place to be for the game. You won't miss a thing. Cheeks has the NFL tickets, Sunday and Monday night football, and a variety of appetizers, great sandwiches, and soups. And Cheeks always has plenty of cold beverages to choose from. Enjoy 13 screens with four in the heated beer garden. So let someone else do the cooking and sit back and enjoy yourself. Call your friends and join Cheeks this football season. Cheeks Bar and Grill in Tawanda Plaza, your ticket to the game. Cold nights are what we have to look forward to all winter, but you don't have to wait until spring is just around the corner for a great deal on those must-haves for 2010, like a big green egg cooker and a hot spring spa. Mother Nature may have a good grip on the weather, but the world's best smoker and the number one selling brand, Hot Spring Spa, will go easy on your wallet. Real value is what they sell every day at Backyard Pool and Patio. Visit Backyard Pool and Patio, 2401 East Empire today. They make your backyard fun. Redbird Basketball on the WJBC Country Financial Redbird Radio Network is brought to you by Country Financial. What's your idea of financial security? Former Redbird point guard Jamar Smiley getting a huge ovation here from this crowd at Redbird Arena. The Birds have been bringing back former players for each of their games this season. Jamar, of course, the Starting point guard for the last two NCAA tournament teams in 1998 and 1997. Our sideline reports brought to you by Central Illinois Regional Airport. Fly nonstop to Dallas-Fort Worth from Central Illinois Regional Airport. And the world is one stop away. Let's go to Bruce Evans by the Redbird bench. Well, Dick and Maddie, the whole story over here is all about efforts. As the coaching staff says, hey, you got to pick it up on defense. Defense will help your offense. And certainly getting inside to Dima there on a one-on-one strong move. Got to help things out, guys. Back to you. As the Redbirds have the same five on the floor, and so does Creighton. Dana Altman likes the way these are, guys are playing, so he sticks with these five. He often makes substitutions by now, but not tonight as Carter gets the inbound pass and hands it to Antoine Young, and Creighton goes to work against the Redbird man-to-man. Young up top, spins to the wing, three for Ashford, no, off the back iron, the rebound. Rubin took it away from Harriman, but is called for a foul. In doing so, as Harriman had the ball, and Alex got him on the arm. First on him, third on the team. Creighton will put it in play again. As Young looks, finds Harriman. A three is not good, but he's fouled by Lloyd Phillips on the shot. And that, I believe he was in three-point territory. That apparently will be three. Yes, it will. Three free throws coming for Casey Harriman. Airman out of Ida Grove High School in Ida Grove, Iowa, a small community in the western part of the state, shoots the free throw no good. It's only his 17th free throw attempt of the year, and he's made 11 of those. Dick, I wanted to comment on Jamar Smiley, one of the most competitive players ever to play at Illinois State, really a hard-nosed kid, and, well, you wish you could take his competitiveness and sprinkle it over the 12 or 13 or 15 guys sitting over there in the the white shorts because he was some kind of competitor whether it was practice or game situations well the birds do have some competitive players on this team but nobody more so than he was certainly as Harriman makes the second and third free throws and builds the Creighton lead up to eight at 13 to five now a little half court trap applied by the Jays 
Phillips moves it across the timeline against that defense, and the Birds now look at his own. And Tim Jankovic said we'd see some of this from Creighton. Here's Rubin to Eldridge on the left wing. Cross-court pass Phillips in the corner. Austin Hill with it. He dribbles up top. Phillips a three, and that's too strong. Odia Kosa the rebound. Dima goes up and jump hooks it. Not good, and Carter rebounds it. And back comes Creighton. Creighton across the timeline. Here's Carter to Young on the right side. Young moves toward the right, hands it off to Ashford. Ashford driving inside. Now the pass back. Harriman down the baseline it goes. Here's Lawson. Jump hook. That's good. And it's 15 to 5. Creighton leads by 10. First basket for Kenny Lawson. Phillips across the timeline for the birds. Into the left corner. Now Rubin inside to Deanma. Turns, fakes, now fires. High off the glass, not good. And the rebound for Carter, who pulls it down and finds Antoine Young to the goal. Layup, no. Follow Lawson. As Deanma went to try to block the shot, he did disrupt it, but that left Lawson to poke it home with the offensive rebound. And it's a 12-point Redbird deficit, biggest of the game. Here now on the drive is Hill, but he's forced back to the right corner. 17 to 5 Blue Jays as Phillips has it up top. Left wing Rubin. Now back up high Lloyd. Austin Hill on the right wing. They move it around the horn. Osiris a three, and that's good from the deep left corner. O's first basket. Redford down nine, 17 to 8. Ashford in the front court. Out to Antoine Young. Now right side Carter against Austin Hill. In the corner and a pass. Batted away by Odia Costa. Picked off by Rubin. Alex the other way to Osiris, a jump stop and a pass and a charge is called against Osiris Eldridge as Harriman went down and took another one and now at 13.27 left to go in the half and the Jays up 9 Caleb Corver, Cavell Witter Ethan Raggy the freshman all into the game as is Wayne Runnels, the junior college transfer out of Watonga, Oklahoma, and P.J. Stinnett. Five fresh players for the Jays. Corver with it. Up high, here's Raggy. Stinnett, or uh, rather that's Runnels who gets the pass. Gets a two-witter, bounce pass inside. Runnels against Dima, can't shoot it. Instead outside, Witter a three, not good. Way off, rebounded by who? Knocked by Rubin. Off of Winter, it appeared, but they're giving the ball to the Blue Jays, and that looked like the wrong call. As now Kellen Thornton and Tony Lewis check in for Illinois State. Out go Odia Kosa and Alex Rubin. I'm told that the foul I assessed to Alex Rubin was not called earlier. Apparently, that was just a ball knocked out of bounds off of Alex that hit the end line. And now Creighton back across the timeline. Here's Stinnett with it. To Cavell Witter up on top. Witter moves to the left, and he's fouled by Tony Lewis. And the Birds piling up some foul troubles, as that is now number four against Illinois State. It'll be inbounded by the Blue Jays. Across the timeline comes Witter. Now on the right wing, Stinnett. Into the corner, Witter. Inside, Runnels. Against Lewis. Turns, fades, and shoots it. No good. Weak side rebound to Cyrus Eldridge. Eldridge now across the timeline for the Birds, who still trail by nine at 17 to eight. Left wing Phillips. Up top, here's Kellen. A three, and that's off the back iron. No good, and the rebound's Stinnett for Creighton. Witter across the timeline. Cavell Witter moves it right wing to Stinnett. Now inside. Runnels back out. Raggy to Corver. And now Stinnett as they move it quickly against the Redbird man-to-man. Cavell Witter against Phillips. Gets it to the right wing. Raggy bounce pass down the baseline. Runnels with it there against Lewis. Gets it back outside as Deanman now has gone to the bench. Here's Runnels inside. Can't get by Lewis. Pass back out. Raggy a three. It's no good. And on the rebound, a whistle and a foul. A push against the Blue Jays. Caleb Corver trying to get good rebounding position. Commits the first foul of the game against Creighton, which gets us to an official's timeout. 11.52 left to play here in the opening half, and the Redbirds down 17-8 to as we're back after this on the Redbird Radio Network. 
If you're a high school sports fan, then you can't miss a single issue of You Name It Sports magazine. You Name It Sports provides rosters, schedules, results, and full-color photos of game action. Keep an eye out for the You Name It Sports photographers at your games, then check YouNameItSports.com and view and order your photos. Plus, parents, you can advertise your business with You Name It Sports and support your local high school. Ask about senior portraits, too. Check out You Name It Sports online at YouNameItSports.com or visit them at 1708 Hamilton Road. Sub 2 in Uptown Normal is not just a sports bar. Sure, you can watch all your favorite college and pro teams on the four big screens and 16 other TVs, including HD TVs. But do you know how great the food is at Pub 2? Pub 2 offers daily food and drink specials, and they have the best cheeseburgers and cheese balls anywhere. And because their prices are so low, you can afford to bring the whole family. So tonight or after any game, stop into Pub 2, a Redbird supporter since 1974, corner of College and Linden in Uptown Normal. McLean County's voice for weather. 1230 WJBC and WJBC.com. Quick scoreboard update from around the Missouri Valley Conference. 11 and a half left to play in the first half down in Carbondale, and Bradley leads 17 to 8 over the Salukis. They're tied at 11 between Drake and Evansville with 13 minutes left to play in the first half. We'll keep you posted on that one, but now back out to Doug Collins scored at Redbird Arena and Dick and Manny. They are score the same as in that Southern Bradley game, Zach. The Birds trail 17 to 8 as we head to our Central Illinois Regional Airport sideline microphone. Here again is Bruce Evans. Well, guys, the Blue Jays have as many points in the paint as the Redbirds have points tonight. That is not uh, beyond the uh, the scrutiny of the coaching staff over here. The Birds still trying to crack that uh, defense for Creighton, saying get the ball inside the paint, look for a shot. Otherwise, they'll collapse. You should have an open look. Guys, back to you. Redford basketball is brought to you in part by Orthopedic and Sports Enhancement Center, your team leader for comprehensive sports medicine as the Redbirds have put the ball in play and they move it across the timeline. Osiris Eldridge has it in the front court. Now to Lloyd Phillips. Creighton still in that zone. Austin Hill on the right wing finds Osiris. High post Thornton back to O. 15 to shoot now as Osiris drifts toward the right. Bounce pass inside. Here's Tony Lewis. Goes to work and shoots it hard off the rim or off the side of the board, rather. But that's because he was fouled by Wayne Runnels, who seems a bit mystified by the call. Well, that's three calls that that young gentleman has made, and I've been mystified by all three. So if you're 0 for 3, the next one's got to be good. But I thought Tony Lewis just lost the handle on the basketball. As Lewis does go to the free throw line for two, the first of which is good. Tony has shot the free throw well overall this year. He was in a slump for a little while, but has come out of that and is at 72% heading into this game as he shoots another one. That's not good. Rebound Thornton. Birds with another chance. Osiris from three, and he missed it. Thornton reaching in for the rebound, and he called for the over-the-back foul. That's the first on him, and that is six already on the Redbirds. Oh, I take that back. He's 0 for 4. On calls you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, okay. Witter across the timeline to Stanett. Here's the feed to Corver, right of center. Now Witter on the left side. Who spins it to the right wing. Corver outside the arc. Penetrates inside. Now gives up the ball, but it's knocked by Osiris. Corver got it back. Great and fortunate there as Stinnett has it right of center. 17 to 9 after that one free throw by Lewis. Redford deficit is 8. Here's Stinnett with a 3, and he missed it over Osiris. Rebound, Corver grabbed it away from Lewis and dribbles it out and now gets the return pass from Raggy, and they've got a fresh shot clock. Stinnett with it. Baseline drive got around Thornton, who's called for the foul. That's his second. That's 7 on the team, and so only 9.5 minutes into the game, Creighton goes to the free throw line for a one and one. And one of our keys was to keep Creighton off the free throw line and boy, they're getting an early start. They've already attempted three. Casey Harriman on that one foul against Lloyd Phillips as now Thornton forced out of the game with his second foul. Dean Odiacosa back in. So it's Odiacosa and Lewis up front with Phillips Hill and Osiris Eldridge on the perimeter. Meanwhile, P. Allen Stinnett shoots the first of the one and one, misses it. And the rebound for Austin Hill. So it's still 17 to 9. Redford deficit, eight points. Here's Osiris. Baseline, 17 footer off the dribble. No, but he's knocked down and fouled by Runnels, who picks up his second foul. And to the free throw line goes Osiris Eldridge. 
8-0 this year at 80% from the line. Three and a half attempts per game. Gets a couple here. With now ten and a half minutes left in what's not been a great first half for the Redbirds as O rolls the free throw good for his fourth point, and it's 17 to 10. Harriman and Lawson come back in for Creighton. Runnels is out. As the free throw for O is good, gets them both, slices the lead to six. Witter across the timeline. Raggy is the other one who went out for Creighton. As Corver has it at the right wing, up high, Stinnett. Ball tipped, but Witter rescues it. Phillips nearly had the steal. Birds in those passing lanes, creating some havoc. As Witter at the wing gives it up to Harriman, who comes up top and finds Corver. Now inside, ball knocked away and stolen by Osiris, who will dunk it at the other end. The knockaway by Odia Kosa. Osiris gets the goal, Birds within four. 17-13, now the count. Here's Witter to Corver on the left wing. He comes up to the top, fires a three, and it's no good. And the rebound, Redford. Lewis took it out of there. Tony drives to within 15 feet, now finds Phillips outside. Here's Hill's long one. That is too strong, and the rebound comes out to Harriman. And now Witter has it for Creighton. Back the other way come the Blue Jays. And Corver inside Lawson against Deanma. Turns, fires, misses, rebound. Odiacosa tapped it. And the birds come up with it. It's Deanma. Great hustle. And now Deanma's foul by Caleb Corver. His second foul. Fourth on the team. Meanwhile, Rubin back in. Phillips out for the Redbirds. And Tony Lewis has really given us a nice lift with his aggressive play. And Illinois State continues to get a lot of deflections and taking Creighton out of their patterns. And... Illinois State's picking up the defense quite a bit here in the last couple minutes. First three or four deflections, Mike, didn't result in the turnover, but the next one sure did. And they're resulting in Creighton not being as confident in their passing. Here's Eldridge to the left, shoots off the dribble, and misses short in the rebound. Lewis, who goes back up and scores as he's fouled. Tony puts the birds within two and could make it a one-point difference from the line. And Dick, those are the Schooner's hot points, and... Hopefully, Tony will be able to add one more on and make it three Schooner's hot points, but Tony really working hard inside. As Lewis back to the free throw line where he made one of two a moment ago. The foul is on Lawson, his first, team's fifth, as the free throw is not good, and the rebound for Ashford, who just got back in the game for the Blue Jays. Nine minutes to go in the half. Birds now back to within two. They were down 11 nothing at the start in this one. Here's Young to the wing. Ashford, who scored nine early points, Gets it inside. Lawson jump hook. That short. Good defense by Dima. Rebound. Eldridge. Birds back in the front court. Here's Osiris. He fires it inside. Lewis to the goal. Layup. No. Rebound. Creighton. As Tony again tried to line drive it off the glass. Carter has the rebound off that miss. Justin Carter just back into the game. Deals it outside to Ashford. Daryl Ashford, the J.C. transfer against Osiris. Picks it up and goes to Young. Now at the wing. Shot fake Harriman. Back out it comes. Carter to Ashford. Bounce pass down low. Lawson knocked away from behind by Hill. Birds have the steal. Pass back to Austin. And he got it blocked. Out of bounds from behind by Carter without the foul. As Osiris returned the ball to Austin Hill ahead of the defense. And somehow Carter made the play from behind. It's off of him. It still belongs to the Birds. A very, very dangerous pass by Osiris. I don't know how he threaded it through there, and Carter really did a nice job hustling back with the block. Justin Clark now replaces Osiris Eldridge for the Redbirds with 8.09 left in the first half, and the Birds down 17-15. Chad Millard, or Millard is the way that's pronounced, the transfer from Louisville. He's a senior out of New Hampshire, M-I-L-L-A-R-D. He's the 11th player to get in for Creighton as it comes inside to Lewis here on the inbound pass, and a double dribble is called against Tony. So the birds turn it over. And Creighton has it back still up by two, 17-15. Yeah, I love the amount of touches that Lewis is getting in the lane. Really is opening up our offense. Young into the paint, shoots it, and gets it from 14 feet. As Young not picked up as he dribbles it down the floor and does it all by himself. First Creighton basket in a while as the Redbirds have scored six straight. 
And it's now 19-15, Blue Jays. Justin Clark in a jam and a reach-in foul is called against the Blue Jays. They are calling it tight, and the players will have to adjust to that as Ashford picks up his first at six fouls already against Creighton. The Birds have committed seven here in the first 12 minutes of the game as our official timeout comes with 7.47 left in the opening half. 19-15 Creighton as we're back after this on the Redbird Radio Network. After months of anticipation. After hundreds of hours gathering Illinois' best used vehicles and marking them down. It's finally ready. O'Brien Mitsubishi is launching the new year with the launch of our brand new used car outlet. You've never seen so many beautiful pre-owned vehicles. Get to O'Brien Mitsubishi's brand new used car outlet for all the best makes, all your favorite models. Shop our budget area with vehicles from $29.95 to $99.95. Or check out our huge selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, vans, SUVs, and luxury. Vehicles. You name it, O'Brien Mitsubishi's brand new used car outlet has it. With your purchase, you'll receive a money back guarantee, an extended warranty, and complimentary roadside assistance. O'Brien Mitsubishi is your used vehicle locator. Can't find what you want? Bring us your used car request. We'll track down the car of your dreams. Don't miss the launch of O'Brien Mitsubishi's used car outlet at the same great location on the corner of Fort Jesse and Veterans Parkway in Normal. Click O'BrienTeamNormal.com. Plus tax, tag title, see dealer for details. Redbird Basketball on the WJBC Country Financial Redbird Radio Network is brought to you by Country Financial. What's your idea of financial security? With every three-point basket, the Redbirds score. Gill Street Sports Bar and Restaurant makes a donation to the General Redbird Scholarship Fund, thereby helping to spread the red. The Birds down 19-15 with just a couple of threes so far in this game with 7.47 left in the half as we go over to our sideline microphone right at the Redbird bench. Here's Bruce Evans. Well, Dick, Bird's not shooting a three very good, but they are hustling a lot. However, when you get down so early in the ballgame, you have to expend a lot of energy getting back in here, and you already you can see a little bit of the effects of that guy as the Bird's getting a little tired just before that last timeout. As the Redbirds have put it in play, here's Ruben up top to Phillips. Justin Clark, the other perimeter player. It's Odia Cosa out there with Tony Lewis otherwise. Phillips to Justin Clark, the freshman, a baseline drive. Now he spins and lays it up and scores. Beautiful left-handed layup as he went across the rim and put it in with the left hand, and the Birds back to within two. Very Osirisish taking the ball to the basket. Very, very nice play. Ashford to Millard at the high post, down at the other end. Now Har- Harriman a three, and it's good. Harriman over Lewis gets the three-point basket that gives Creighton the five-point lead. And the Redbirds shy of the timeline against the half-court trap. Now get it across, just barely, to Phillips. Back to Rubin. Baseline drive. Alex, 17-footer, no. A little short rebound to Antoine Young. Here come the Blue Jays. Young into the front court. Stolen by Rubin in the open court. Alex the other way. Gets it back to Phillips. His three is no good. Rebound out to Alex. And back to Phillips. And another opportunity for the Birds, who still trailed 22 to 17. Yeah, Alex took a shot a little bit quick, Nick, two possessions ago, and he made up for it, getting a couple loose balls. Great hustle again by Alex. Lloyd inside, supposed to be for Lewis, but the pass off target and off of Tony's hand and out of play. Another turnover against the Redbirds. That's seven already against Illinois State here in the first 13 and a half minutes. You know, a lot of times you just may- need to make the simple pass. You don't need to make the spectacular. As Ashford has it to Harriman who already has five points. Now inside Carter, layup, good. Carter posting low, getting great position, and he shot it as soon as he got it and scores his second basket. Creighton up 24 to 17. Here's Phillips with it. Pass into the backcourt to Rubin. Alex has to hurry, and he didn't beat the 10 seconds as Creighton's half-court trap forces the Birds into an eighth turnover. And with six minutes exactly to go, in the first half, Creighton has the seven-point lead and the ball. Yeah, not very good recognition by Illinois State that time. Four of the players went into the front court and left Phillips in the back court with nobody to pass him to. He got trapped, and by the time we got the ball across, the ten seconds had expired. Reuben out, Eldridge in for the Redbirds. Here's Young. Moves it to Harriman on the right side. And now at the right wing area, here's Carter. Millard has it up on top as they pass on the perimeter here. Four of the five starters in for Creighton as Carter is tied up by Phillips. Lloyd Phillips reached in 
and tied up Carter. Carter kind of exposes that ball. Ruben knocked it away from him earlier, and this time Lloyd able to reach in as he dribbles it toward the basket and get the held ball call. It's Illinois State's turn. Yeah, good point. Dick Carter does drop dribble the ball very high, but he's usually strong enough. It's not a problem, but play Phillips with good hands there. The birds break down the pressure and now get it across the timeline. Here's Clark up top to Phillips. Still a seven-point deficit for the Redbirds as Eldridge has the ball. Millard out on him. Here's Phillips. He'll shoot a three, and it is good. As the birds are right back to within four. Second three of the game for Lloyd Phillips, and now it's Dana Altman's turn to call for the 30 second timeout brought to you by O'Brien Mitsubishi. Visit today at Fort Jesse Road and Veterans Parkway in Normal or at O'BrienTeamNormal.com. Well, it'll be interesting to see how long Creighton stays with the zone. I hope they stay in it the rest of the night, but I think they're a much better man-to-man team, and with their depth, they can really play aggressive man-to-man, so we may see the zone only in the first half. Or maybe we'll no longer see it after this timeout. Could be one of the reasons that Altman called the timeout, although, of course, he can switch the zone on the fl- or switch from the zone to the man-to-man on the fly as well. Well, a horrible start, Mike, but the birds have regained a little bit of their balance. Still struggling more on the offensive end than on the defensive end. Yeah, you really got to kind of wonder what it's going to take to get us out of that first five-minute slump. Are you, you know, juggle the lineup, throw it in five guys that rarely play or something? I don't know what the answer is. I'm sure Tim is confused, as is the coaching staff. But boy, we just got off to an atrocious start. Stinnett checked in for the Blue Jays. He has the ball. Driving inside. Layup. Good. Angled from the left wing and beat his man and nobody helped. And he gets an easy one. And it's 26-20. to 20. Redbird deficit is back up to six points as Illinois State has moved it into the front court against that half-court trap. Here's Osiris. Pedals it high to Phillips. And Lloyd picks up his dribble. Bounces it down to Dima. It is still the zone as Odia Costa double team passes out of it. Clark a baseline drive and a pass toward Lewis in traffic. Knocked away. Stolen by Antoine Young. Ninth turnover against the Birds. Young now to the goal. A runner. No. And the rebound for Lewis who's been all over the glass. Across the timeline come the Redbirds. Here's Osiris to Clark. Down the baseline. Dima down lower. Layup for Lewis. Great pass as Dima recognized the double team that left Tony alone on the other side of the basket. And the Birds back to within four, 26-22. And why not? With Kenny Lawson on the bench, he's their only presence defensively. Let's keep pounding it inside. Corver with it to Young. And Stinnett now gets a screen from Millard, shoots off of it, and misses the three. And as the rebound comes down, a foul against Millard, or a Corver rather. It is Caleb Corver of Creighton, and that's three on him already. The younger brother of Kyle Corver, the brother in between them, Clayton Corver, played at Drake when Drake won the Missouri Valley Conference Championship a couple of years ago, and then the youngest brother of them all is now at Missouri, Kansas City, as an official timeout is called here with 358 left in the first half. Redbirds have trailed all the way. They're down right now 26-22 as we're back after this on the Redbird Radio Network. Meyer knows that ever since the dawn of history, people have loved low prices. Take the Cro Magnums. Look what I picked up today at Rocks and Things. A woolly mammoth welcome mat. Don't worry, you're not so little hairy head. It only costs nine pterodactyl teeth. Well, for nine pterodactyl teeth, I guess you can keep it. Two million years later, Meyer has everyday low prices on everything from steaks to big screen TVs, not to mention thousands of sale items and five thousand price drops each week. Because if history has taught us anything, it's that low prices never get old. Meyer, higher standards, lower prices. Buying a newer used car can be nerve-wracking, but Extreme Motors takes the worry of buying a car right out of the equation. Drive Hyundai, Kia's, and Nissan, and buy with confidence, because Extreme Motors offers lifetime warranties on all new and used vehicles. Extreme Motors, 2029 Ireland Grove Road, and 1608 South Morrissey in Bloomington. Or visit driveextreme.com. Do you really want it? Do you really want it? Do you really Hey, Redbird fans, this is Jim Fitzpatrick. Join me weekdays at 5 o'clock on the Voice of Illinois State Athletics, 1230 WJBC and WJBC.com. That foul on Corver, I mentioned his third, and he's out of the game now, and Ethan Raggy, the freshman from Minnesota, has checked in for the Blue Jays. 
but uh, it's the seventh on the team, and so the Birds are about to shoot a one and one here. Before they do that, with Illinois State trailing 26 to 22, let's head to our Central Illinois Regional Airport sideline microphone. Here's Bruce Evans. Well, guys, the coaching staff for the Birds spent the entire time out talking about press offense and how to how to break that pressure. In fact, how to attack it. And I think that's uh, what they'd really like to do, but certainly that 10-second call did not go over well on the sideline here, guys. Yeah, well, of course, it's one thing to get it across the timeline and get into your half-court offense, but hopefully, Mike, you can make them pay the price a little bit once in a while. And that's why Illinois State has had success against Creighton in the last couple of years. We've really been able to punish their different defenses and attack, attack, attack. We're not doing so tonight yet. Justin Clark is on the line. This is his first free throw attempt as a Redbird as he bends the knees and shoots the front end of the one and one Good in and out off the glass and back in. And three points already for Justin Clark, who's, as you know, if you follow Redbird basketball at all, really struggled shooting the ball. But he made a delicious layup earlier and now has a free throw and looks for another. Line driver is good. He doesn't put a lot of arch on that shot, but he got both of those. And the lead is down to two, 26-24. People in the radio business, Dick, love their airtime. And, boy, Justin Clark does not want any airtime. He just, like you said, just line drives them in there. Young to the right wing, Raggy with it. Bounce pass down low. Here's Lawson against Dima. They bump heavily. Pass back out. Good job by Odia Costa. Carter has it now. And now Stinnett, guarded by Hill. He's forced to give it up. Young with it right of center. Moves to the left, hedged by Dima. The pass back to Raggy. Inside it goes now. Here's Lawson turning, shooting, and missing. And the rebound for the Birds. Lewis shovels it ahead. Phillips to Hill. Inside shot. No. Too short off the glass ball. Tipped out of bounds by the Birds. And it belongs to Creighton. Hill had to change his shot in traffic. Very difficult shot. And he missed it pretty badly as Antoine Young goes the other way for Creighton. Against Phillips, deals it to the corner. Carter, a shot fake and a drive, and a reverse layup. No. Battle for the rebound. Hell ball. As Lewis is tied up by Carter, it will be Creighton's turn. But Lewis has really been the difference in the first half for Illinois State since he's come in the game. Five points, four rebounds, and has really, as I mentioned earlier, given us a presence in the paint. Antoine Young lobs it to Lawson down at the or up at the high post. Now he tries to go against Odiacosa and uh, reach in foul by the help defender, Lewis, will put Creighton at the line. It's the second on Tony Lewis, and that's not good. You'd love to keep him in there, as you said, Mike, uh, given how well he's playing. Yeah, and when your game is power and banging inside, you really don't need to pick up a silly foul like that. Birds decide to go small as Ruben is Lewis's replacement. Meanwhile, it's Lawson at the line for the Blue Jays getting the one and one. As he shoots the first one, good. He's uh, an 80% free thrower. Boy, that's another weapon for him. Uh, Most big guys don't shoot it that well from the line. He makes the first and the second as well. They both look pure as the two throws gives Lawson six points and the Blue Jays now with a four-point lead at 28-24. Three minutes left here in the half. Here's Deanma, back to Ruben across the timeline. Creighton continues to use that half-court trap. Birds have had the 10-second call made against them once. Austin Hill in the deep right corner with now 20 to shoot. Comes into the lane and pulls up and shoots it. No good. It rolls off of there. Deanma kept it alive, but Young tracks it down for Creighton. Now the ball knocked away, but picked up by Lawson. Out to Raggy, who gets a three. And Creighton's lead is back up to seven. Well, they do a great, great job of running that secondary break and finding the trailers, finding the guys filling the lanes. Really an experienced play on the fast break. First basket for the freshman Raggy, and the Birds now down 31-24, have it in the front court. As Eldridge passes it down the baseline, a whistle. Jimmy Lawson, I think. That would be his second foul. And so they have two of their post players, Wayne Runnels, and Kenny Lawson, actually the two biggest players they have, well, except Millard is the other one who has that kind of size, but two of their top three sized players with two fouls as I'd say Millard, it's Millard, Chad Millard, M-I-L-L-A-R-D. He now replaces Lawson. Meanwhile, it's Deanma at the line. 
Creighton, what? a totally different team with Lawson on the bench. They really don't have the power inside game. As his, his guys that play behind him don't have the power or the size and strength. Deema missed the front end of the one-and-one, and, one, and now the rebound is knocked out of bounds, and it will belong to the Redbirds. Knocked out by Creighton. So the Birds missed the free throw, but still have the possession with 2.18 left in the half, and Creighton up seven. Hill to put it in play. And he lobs it way up top to Phillips, who has to leap high to make the catch shy of the timeline. Rubin back to Phillips, now right side Osiris. Inside Deema against Miller. They go right to Miller to Lawson out of the game, and he, Deema, puts it up there on the rim. It falls off not good, but a foul is called, and it is against Millard. And that's his first. Yeah, Millard's just in there for fouls, Dick. He has no chance of stopping or really even slowing Demon. They're just using him as a stopgap until they can get Kenny Lawson back in the game. As Deema, who just missed the front end of the one-and-one, one, gets two this time. The senior from Nigeria scores the first of those two as his third point of the game, and the Redbirds within the six. And Lawson's really the only player Creighton needs to worry about getting in foul problems. Everybody else is replaceable with their shuffle. As Deanma's next one is off the back iron, not good, so he made one of three free throws there, and the Redford deficit is six as Creighton rebounded the miss, and Young is in the front court. Here's Carter up top. Raggy wide open three is good. And they cannot leave that guy open. He can light it up from the perimeter. It's now a nine-point Creighton lead at 34-25. Phillips will move it across the timeline for the Redbirds. Here it goes to Hill on the right wing. Back up to Lloyd, left side Rubin. Creighton still in that zone. It's served him pretty well as it comes inside to Dima. He turns, goes to the goal, misses the shot, but again a foul, and Millard has picked up his second. So the three true post players for Creighton, Runnels, Millard, and Lawson, each have two fouls. And Dima is back at the line. Odiacosa came into this game with a 54% free throw shooting figure. One for three so far in this one. Now 92 seconds to go here in the opening half as Dima tries to cut into Creighton's nine-point lead, and he does not. Rolled on the rim, hit the glass, back to the front of the rim, and fell off after hanging there for a while. The good shooters get those to drop in, Dick. The guys that struggle, they just always teeter and fall off. Another effort for the senior, and the Nigerian misses that one off the back iron. The rebound for Creighton. And the Blue Jays, up nine, have the ball. Young in the front court. Right side pass, here's Justin Carter. Moves it high to Raggy. Covered up this time by Rubin. He gets rid of it to Stinnett. Stinnett now picks up his dribble, fires it to Carter on the right side. Carter into the lane, shoots it, gets it. Phillips went for the steal, and Carter able to get to the goal nonetheless and lay it in for an 11-point Creighton lead at 36-25. Now Clark from the left corner. Passed up the three and passes the ball out to Phillips. A minute left now in the half as it comes inside the Deanma. Against Miller. Back out. Clark a three. Good! Justin Clark makes his third three of the season and the Redbirds within eight at 36 to 28. Justin now with seven points. His high as a Redbird. Stinnett with it up top for Creighton. Pulls up 17 footer. Good. So he gets two of those three backs to net second basket. Creighton up 10, 38-28. Now the shot clock turned off, and the Redbirds here will try to hold it for the final shot. Eldridge across the timeline. Fakes the drive toward the goal. Now between two defenders, gives it up high to Phillips with 17 seconds left here in the opening half. Redbirds trailed 11 to nothing at the start. Now they're down 10, 38-28. They have the ball as seven seconds are left. Here's Lloyd, right of the lane, drive, and he lost the ball out of bounds on the dribble. It squirted out of his hands before he could shoot it. Two seconds left. Creighton will put it in play and try and fire something up here before the horn. And they bring in Lawson. And out goes Raggy. Lawson will be the inbounder. He's probably got the best arm, wouldn't you guess? Makes sense to me. He'll look for somebody. At, well, he just <laughs> feeds it in to Young, who dribbles to the timeline. Now fires a 40-footer, not good, at the buzzer. And that is the end of the first half. The Redbirds trail by the count of 38-28 to 28 here after the first 20 minutes of play. We're back with more after this on the Redbird Radio Network. 
Long-term care can often mean long-term debt. But when you add the long-term care benefit option on a new whole life policy from Country Financial, you can withdraw the policy's debt benefit while you're living to help pay for nursing home or other qualified care expenses. Or ask me, Eric LePan, about our long-term care policy that offer even more protection. To find out more about long-term care coverage, contact me, Eric LePan, your country representative in Bloomington. This is our country. Winter can really be a drag, especially on your car. Z-Bart Superstore has three great ideas to make life a little easier. Your car can be toasty warm every morning with just a push of a button with a remote starter. Or help keep your favorite vehicle looking its best with rust proofing. Z-Bart Superstore can also detail your car and make it look brand new. Head to Z-Bart Superstore today at 9 West Fort Court, just off East Empire in Bloomington. Or give them a call at 662-7878. Hi, this is Matt. Visit us online at zbartsuperstore.com and join the Redline Rewards Club to receive your instant $30 coupon. Hi, this is Scott Lachlan. Join us every weekday morning beginning at 5 for the news and information you need to get your day going. On your voice for the Redbirds, 1230 WJBC and WJBC.com. A 10-point halftime deficit for the Redbirds. 38-28, Creighton has the advantage. Redbird basketball is brought to you in part by the folks at Susie Davis Travel. Contact them today to find out more about their exclusive non-stop winter departures from Central Illinois. We'll be back to check the first half statistical story in a little bit. But right now, let's turn it over to our studio host. Here is Zach Parcell. Big halftime brought to you by StarCrest Cleaners. StarCrest Cleaners customers are spotless in the spotlight. Redbirds trail by 10, 38, 28. We'll check a scoreboard of some other Valley games coming up in a little bit. But first, after a break, we will talk a little Redbird women's soccer with head coach Drew Roth. That follows this. It's the Redbirds trail by 10, 38, 28 at the halftime break. Back after this on the WJBC Country Financial Redbird Radio Network. It might not come up in a backyard barbecue with friends. Still, it's probably on many people's minds. What's your idea of financial security? Just ask. Financial security? Goal number one. I want to make sure there's some kind of safety net for my family. We need to know we have enough insurance for emergencies. And making sure we have a good plan for our retirement. It's a personal choice. At Country Financial, there's only one right answer to the definition of financial security. Yours. So no matter where you're starting from, your Country Financial representative can provide you with a tangible plan to protect what you have today and plan for the future. Wow. I could open my own barbecue restaurant. Just tell us your idea of financial security, and we'll put our experience and financial strength to work for you. At Country, we always ask, what's your idea of financial security? See the Country Financial representative near you, or visit countryfinancial.com. 